So it's hot. It's hot in Arizona. It's not as hot as it was before, but I pulled the trigger on a mini split AC system. And I want to use this video to go over the reasons why I thought the investment may be worth it. And we'll kind of cover some of the performance of the unit. Right now, uh, according to my garage, it is 105 degrees. It's about 100 outside. And this unit is a Mirage unit with a Mitsubishi compressor. I found a guy on Facebook Marketplace. This is blowing some really nice cold air. And the mini split is pulling in hot air from the top of the unit, which you can't see. It's pushing out cold and also exits and sends out some of the hot air on the back of the home as well with the compressor that's just sitting on the ground behind uh, my solar units. So a couple of things as to why I did this. A, of course, I want to be comfortable in the garage. B, this is a single ton unit for garages up to 450 square feet. Mine's about 480, so it made sense and the, it was economical. I paid just over $1,000 to have this installed with electrical, which was awesome as these units can run up to 700 bucks. So the labor would think 300, 350. The power wall, so this power wall, I noticed discharges, the fan turns on. This thing has a built-in fan so the battery doesn't get too hot and that excess heat gets expelled from the battery which is clearly using a necessary power from the grid and then sending it, either A, it's using it from the battery or B, it's pulling from the grid, but either way, even if it's a minute amount of energy, it's making the garage hotter, which is making the battery run harder. We know how that's just really annoying that you have this never ending cycle of it's too hot. So let me turn on the fan and just blow the hot air into an area that it's hot. So that's where I don't think this is as much as an issue with batteries that are on the outside of the home, but I like from the aesthetic, I put all the hardware on the outside of the home and just left the battery. Um, my wife has the model three, but the other thing is cabin overheat protection, which we know triggers on just over a hundred degrees. And the goal is if we can get the garage down into the eighties, It'll be more comfortable. I'll have less heat loss and heat transfer into the home for uh, the AC and during the summer. In the wintertime, this unit also has a heat pump, so it's going to be able to warm the place up if it gets really cold as the winters here can still get into the 30s on occasion and 40s regularly at night. And then the car won't lose as much power or have to draw from being plugged in to trigger the cabin overheat protection, which is basically running all the time that the car is parked in the garage. So. We'll see how the performance does. I'll give this a few hours. Um, actually, I'll check in every half hour to see what the temperature drop is, and we'll see how it goes. All right, it's been about 35 minutes. Let's check on the garage. Ooh, definitely feel a difference in temperature. 99, so six degree difference in about half an hour. Um, not bad. I can definitely feel a difference. Right now it's set at 22 Celsius, which is about 72 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. So we'll keep checking on it. Steels feels awesomely cold, really, really, really quiet. So a couple updates. Um, this is the next morning or the next day, I should say. It's about almost 2 p.m. in the afternoon. It's 105 in Scottsdale. And the garage um, in the morning was 79 degrees. I have it set at 79. It was easily getting to this point, super cool. Uh, when I woke up in the morning and normally right now the garage would be well over 100 degrees and a couple of things I did notice that is you know somewhat obvious is that you know when you open the garage this is a 480 square foot garage so a one ton mini split system works out really well is it lets it lets in a lot of air so the temperature is going to raise dramatically if you leave the garage open for any extended period of time this we didn't really think about because we didn't have an ac so who cares how long the garage is open but now we have to be much more conscious to shut the garage as soon as we get in so we don't let out all the cold air it just spent hours trying to reduce the temperature so as long as you're doing that because the garage is such a big opening the temperature can rise dramatically like five six degrees in a matter of minutes um, so when you pull in, close the garage really quickly. We have a timer on the garage that closes after about a minute. Would highly encourage if you have a garage set up to have an auto close. Right now, I just got home from lunch and the garage was about 87, which is great. It was a lot lower, but my wife came home, the garage heated up and then it brought it back down. Feels really good in here. Now it's about 90. So we just got home from lunch a few minutes ago and the AC's running to hopefully bring that back down, but again, the car has to vent 
the cold air because we're running the AC. So that's pushing into the garage and then uh, the AC still working. So generally we're going to be able to keep this place even coming in and out of the garage several times per day, well under a hundred. And then it seems to drop in temperature throughout the day. So I have it set on auto to, I have time of use. So I, my electricity is higher between two and eight in the summer in Arizona. And the timer has the AC pretty much kick on during lower cost hours and then turn off when my solar and battery, you know, I don't want to really pull from that since I want to save that for the AC usage. So it's, it's automatic and really cheap to run. So been really happy with the mini split system. Highly recommend it. What they also told me is I have a brick wall and uh, the guy that installed it also mentioned the brick wall is good for insulation versus wood as there's a lot more heat and cold transfer. There's also a heat pump built in here. So in the summertime uh, or in the wintertime when it gets colder that this can make sure that it's not too cold in the garage. But overall very happy. It draws about one kilowatt on a steady pull throughout the day. Not too bad and pretty efficient. And I'll give it a thumbs up. Highly recommend it to keep the car from using overheat protection too much, keep the power wall from discharging unnecessarily, and just being generally comfortable in the garage so I can work on projects or other things without being unbearably hot. And then actually my kitchen is about two degrees colder than what it was before. My kitchen's always been hotter because you go in and out of the garage and the hot air comes in. There's heat transfer through the walls. It's not brick between the garage and the kitchen. It's uh, drywall. So that's been another added benefit is less heat loss or, or less cool air loss between the garage and the kitchen. So thanks for listening. And hopefully if you get one, it's great. I found a guy on Facebook Marketplace who installed my system. Uh, he was a tra he's a, a, a trained electrician for 15 years so some that don't have ex as much experience with um, uh, electrical work may charge more labor but was one thousand and fifty dollars for the split system the compressor mounting it uh, to the wall with labor and electricity and everything and that's with a um, it looks to be about seven or eight feet distance from the mini split to the main panel on the outside in terms of uh, wiring that you need anyways Hope you enjoyed that. Talk to you in the next one. Peace.